This is part two of this wonderful ongoing saga. We talked about this dear Druze man who was converted while reading the Bible and who moved to the land of Israel to be a witness. He traveled the hills, sharing the gospel, visiting in people's homes. And uh, this is now the second part of this wonderful equation of love. And it's the story of a man, Farid Waji Tabari. He was from a influential home, uh, became a lawyer and attorney, studied at the American University and the University of Chicago, graduated in law. Uh, he was a man of letters. He did translation work for the Jerusalem Post, was associated with the contingent that went to meet with Begin and Sadat in settling the peace claims between Israel and Egypt, and taught at the American Baptist School, taught English there, and also the Orthodox High School in Haifa. Very educated man, quite cosmopolitan, had Christian, Jewish, Muslim friends. And while he was in Jerusalem, he met a young lady. Her name was Alice, and she was actually from an Assyrian family, and they had lived in Beirut, and then she had moved to the land of Israel. They were nominal Christians, although she had a godly grandfather. They, they met in Jerusalem at the YMCA, and romance struck up, and, and they decided to get married. Now, this was quite unusual. This is back um, during the 48 War, the War of Independence. And he brought a sheikh, and she brought a pastor, and both of them blessed the marriage. And so they began married life. Sometime later, they moved to the Nazareth area. He was lecturing at the kibbutzim. He was well known for his knowledge of um, Islamic culture and literature and so on. And so he was traveling around in these various areas. And so they lived the town just outside of Nazareth. He ended up on the board of the Scottish hospital there. Again, familiar with Christians and Jews and Muslims in the area. Billy Graham came to Nazareth to preach the gospel. And so Alice Tabari went out and heard the gospel, and she wanted to go forward. Her little boy tried to constrain her and say, no, mommy, don't do this. You know, we'll be rejected and so on. But she insisted, and she went forward, and, and she confessed Christ as her Savior. Her husband was noncommittal, but uh, they, they carried on in their marriage. But, but then one afternoon, about three o'clock, this Druze man, no foul, came up to Mr. Tabari as he was getting out of his car in the afternoon. And he said to him, I have a question for you. Do you know where you're going when you die? And uh, Mr. Tabari invited this Druze man into his home for dinner. Well, this began a pattern. And his wife, Alice, she had gone from church to church, but had not really found a, a home where she felt these people were serious about the things of God. And so she asked this Druze man, where did he meet? And he began to describe what a New Testament church might look like, the place where he met simple, gathered around the Lord, not having any kind of hierarchy, uh, liturgy, but just simply obedient to the, to the Word of God. And she became very excited about that. Well, I don't know all the details, but eventually they moved to the Haifa area, and she began to fellowship with the Christians there at a local New Testament church. Well, eventually her husband decided he wanted to be a judge, a Sharia judge. And the Christians there felt this is very unfortunate. They thought if this happens, um, you know, he'll forbid his wife to come out to fellowship with the Christians and so on. Uh, but that was not God's plan. He was appointed a judge and began to serve in the Jaffa area, which is 
quite a bit south, down south of uh, Tel Aviv. And he was trying to commute, but it's a long journey. Uh, and and finally he said, I just can't do this. And so he uh, rented a room in Jaffa and he would go down for three or four days and then come back for the long weekend. Well, <clears throat> he was looking for a quiet place. He liked to study, liked to read, and, and he wasn't interested in all the partying that goes on in that city. And he found a nice quiet room, but it was in a Christian guest house. And in the evening, the Christians would invite him to come to a Bible study. Now, most of these people were Messianic Jews. They were Jews who had discovered that the Messiah promised in the Old Testament was in fact the Jesus of Nazareth who had died at Calvary. And they'd put their trust in him, not simply as the Messiah, but as their sin bearer. They understood what Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 were really about. And they, in their gentle way, shared Christ with this dear man. And there, while he was in Jaffa, in Yafo, it was there that he put his trust in the Lord. And he was actually baptized in a bathtub in the house because it was very concerning to him. If it became known publicly, then all of his court cases would have been thrown out. And so he kept things under wrap. And it was a very difficult thing. His daughter told me how it was such a, a weight on the man because it's a natural thing. In spite of difficulties and persecution, it's the most natural thing to want to share the glorious truth that God has saved us. And so we go back to this same principle, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 to 29. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Who would think that the way to win the heart of a Sharia Muslim judge would be through a Druze, a, an uneducated Druze man, and some Messianic Jews in Jaffa, and the faithful witness of his dear wife who lived Christ before him. And her children, all their children have gone on for the Lord. And so, here we have the kind of story we get a little window into an area. We have no idea how many people have been touched with the gospel. People we think they've never been reached with the, with the gospel. And yet here they are, a Druze man buying a used book so he could learn to read. A Sharia judge who thought this was a great career move, when in reality it was the way by which God would get alongside him through these um through these converted Jews and share the glorious gospel with them. How God works in these wonderful ways. And he's working all across the Middle East like this. Don't you be surprised when we get to heaven to discover many stories like this. The faithful God. You remember that it was God who drew near to a dear woman whose son was going to be the progenitor of the Arab races. And the very first time we have the revelation of the angel of the Lord coming to a person in need, it was in answer to the cries of that little boy. And still to this day, the angel of the Lord is appearing to Muslims all over the world and showing his love to them and his care. He hears their cry and he draws near to them and shows his love and compassion and forgiveness to them too. So pray for the Muslim world, pray for the Druze, pray for the Jews, and the work of God that is going on in this region, that God may be honored and souls may find peace and joy in believing and trusting the Savior.